This scene from the movie Jaws shows an orca killed by a great white shark. So back then, the narrative was that sharks could even kill the ultimate ocean predator. I was under the impression that orcas hunting great whites has been common knowledge for ages. However, at the time, researchers only speculated that orcas hunted great whites. Despite fishermen's stories about orcas killing sharks, the first documented sighting of killer whales hunting a shark dates back to 1977, off the coast of California. Since then, documented instances of orcas attacking white sharks have increased, with many dead great white sharks with orca bite marks washing ashore. Additionally, drones have recorded several scenes of orcas hunting white sharks. Despite orcas having an obvious advantage, the opening Jaws scene poses an interesting question. Can great white sharks fight back? And if they do, what are the odds of them winning? To answer these questions, let's talk about the challenges sharks face when they deal with orcas. Of course, the first one is size. A typical orca is much larger than a typical great white shark. Orca males are larger than females, and the largest recorded orca weighs 22,000 pounds and is 32 feet long. Female white sharks are larger than males, and the largest observed one, known as deep blue, weighs approximately 5,000 pounds and is 20 feet. You may think that orcas only hunt younger and smaller great white sharks. For example, this footage shows an orca hunting a young great white that is only seven feet. Also, orcas very frequently hunt seven gill sharks. On average, their size is seven feet and they weigh 240 pounds. Seven gill sharks are large, formidable hunters, but their size is next to nothing compared to orcas. Similarly, most documented instances of orcas hunting great whites are related to younger and smaller great whites. The largest great white shark killed by orcas that we know of is 15 feet. But what about larger female great whites? One theory is that though they provide more food, they can be more dangerous and orcas may avoid them for this reason. The bite force of an orca is around 19,000 psi, and the bite force of an average great white is around 4,000 psi. Even though orcas are apparently superior, a great white's bite can still cause serious injury. So, it may seem that orcas simply forego the larger food for the sake Bye, of its risk. Have a great time. But the fact is that there are way more younger great whites compared to older large females. So, first of all, Orcas that hunt great whites come across more younger ones. That's why we have so many recordings of orcas hunting younger great whites. Also, older and larger sharks are more experienced, so they may avoid instances of conflict to save themselves. But the most important one is that the number of large great whites like Deep Blue is so limited that orcas that hunt sharks may not cross paths with them. The next challenge that sharks face is the number of orcas that hunt together. Typically, orca pods consist of 5 to 30 or more members. However, orcas that hunt sharks usually form much smaller pods. For example, drone footage captured in 2022 shows only 5 orcas hunting a shark. While this smaller pod size might seem fortunate for sharks, it is still too much for a shark to handle. The most notorious shark killers are two adult male orcas named Port and Starboard. We don't know much about their past, but they moved off the coast of South Africa in 2015. Soon after their arrival, numerous dead sharks began washing ashore. In one instance, 17 dead seven-gill sharks were found, and in another instance, five dead great white sharks washed ashore. All these dead sharks had one thing in common. Their livers were removed with surgical precision and the rest of their bodies were left intact. Initially, no one knew who was responsible for the death of so many sharks. But then, whale-watching boats reported seeing orcas hunting sharks. We know that orcas are very picky about their food and have very specific diets. For example, southern resident killer whales only eat Chinook salmon, even though other salmon species are more abundant in their habitat. Similarly, orcas that hunt sharks have a very specific diet and only eat their livers. It's because the liver is where sharks store their fat, which is a great source of energy for orcas. But how do we know that Port and Starboard were the murderers? Both orcas have bent dorsal fins, which is uncommon in wild orcas. 
This condition is likely due to their diet, as they feed exclusively on shark liver, which lacks the calcium needed for strong upright fins. Additionally, eyewitnesses and recently recorded videos have shown them hunting great white sharks. Now, let's get back to sharks' problem of orcas hunting in large groups. Observing port and starboard showed that a large pod is not necessary. The teamwork of just two orcas can be enough. In these hunts, huh? one orca can distract the shark while the other attacks. But a very recent recording has changed our understanding of orca teamwork. The footage shows starboard solo hunting a shark, and it proves that shark hunting is relatively easy for experienced orcas. Although starboard hunted a juvenile shark that was only seven feet long, it shows that experienced orcas can hunt alone, at least when targeting smaller and less risky great whites. Besides size and numbers, speed is another challenging factor for sharks. Great whites are extremely fast swimmers and can swim up to 25 miles per hour in short bursts. However, they are slower than orcas, which can reach speeds of 35 miles per hour. Orcas can maintain consistent speeds and swim even faster in short bursts. So if sharks want to survive an attack, they need a head start. But it is not just about orcas' speed. We call orcas sea wolves because they know how to chase their prey. For example, when orcas hunt dolphins, they select a dolphin and separate it from the pod. Orcas are powerful and have more stamina, but they also have a plan to conserve energy. They divide the work with one orca charging the dolphin each time while the rest save energy. Once the dolphin is exhausted, orcas start ramming it. They keep attacking until the dolphin can no longer swim. The same thing can happen to sharks, though it is slightly different. Great white sharks are apex predators themselves, so they sometimes don't realize they need to flee. Instead, when they see an incoming attack or an attack on other sharks, they imitate what a seal might do in case of a shark attack. They try to maintain their distance from orcas and keep an eye on the incident. But their mistake is that orcas mostly work as a team to hunt sharks. So, when a shark is observing an orca from what it thinks is a safe distance, another orca may attack it. And by the time the shark recognizes the attack, it is too late. I think that is how Port and Starboard killed the 17 seven-gill sharks in less than two hours. The sharks all maintained their distance from the two orcas and did not flee. So far, orcas have been superior in everything, but there is one factor that can help sharks escape. They can dive far more deeply than orcas. Sharks' depth of dive is around 4,000 feet, while orcas' depth of dive is around 1,000 feet. Additionally, sharks have no time limit for staying underwater, but orcas have to surface for breathing every 15 minutes. This deep dive capability can help sharks, and we have records showing that they use it to flee orca attacks. In one incident in 2000, researchers recorded an orca killing a shark off the coast of San Francisco. They noticed that sharks had suddenly vanished from the area, so they used a tracking device that was installed on one shark to track them. They discovered that it dove to 1,500 feet and swam non-stop to Hawaii. The sound of the attack or the smell of the shark's carcass likely caused the rest of the great whites to flee to Hawaii. However, orcas that hunt sharks have evolved to deal with this deep dive. You see, orcas that feed on fish usually use echolocation for hunting, so their pods are very noisy. But transient killer whales that hunt larger prey are very silent. This silence allows them to approach sharks undetected. Even though sharks have excellent sensory systems that allow them to effectively sense their environment and detect movement, orcas can be very stealthy in their approach. They can swim silently at high speeds. Additionally, in certain environments with poor visibility or complex underwater terrain, the effectiveness of a shark's sensory system is limited. Orcas may take advantage of such conditions to launch surprise attacks. By the time sharks detect orcas, they don't have much time to flee. Orcas have another significant advantage over great white sharks due to their understanding of shark biology. They are familiar with the fact that flipping a shark upside down induces a state known as tonic immobility and temporarily paralyzes sharks. This knowledge allows orcas to effectively neutralize and prey on great white sharks with minimal resistance. I know that I have talked a lot about how orcas are superior in hunting sharks. 
but our video tries to answer if sharks can fight back. So, do we have any evidence of sharks fighting back? Actually, there are a couple of documented instances of shark survival. In the first instance, researchers found bite marks on a false bay great white shark that was photographed in 2017. Based on the shape of the bite, researchers are pretty sure that it is from an orca. In a paper published in 2023, the paper suggests that the bite mark is from port and starboard. The author says that there are few known orcas attacking sharks in the region. Also, port and starboard were active in the region in 2017, so it is very possible that they attacked the photographed shark. The paper states that apart from the rake marks, this photographed shark appeared to be perfectly fine, swimming normally and being very active and fast. So it can potentially be evidence that sharks may fight back and orcas are not successful every time. Even though it is the only reported case in the scientific literature, the author believes that more such cases will be reported. I found another case of a shark that survived an orca attack reported by National Geographic. In a documentary named Orcas vs. Great Whites, National Geographic shows a great white that has bite marks on its dorsal fin. Marine biologists say that these bite marks definitely belong to orcas. Now the question is, how did these sharks survive the attack? The female survivor was 11.5 feet long in 2017. It is larger than usual orca prey, but not so large that it can pose a threat to orcas. The male shark in National Geographic is also larger than average sharks, but it is relatively small compared to orcas. Apparently, both of these sharks had a close confrontation. So the question is, how did they survive? There are many possibilities. For example, the orca might have had to surface to breathe, allowing the sharks to escape. But one theory is that sharks can be territorial, so they stood their ground. National Geographic tested this theory in another documentary. They played different sounds to see the sharks' reactions. When they played humpback whale sounds, sharks approached the sound source because they saw humpback calves as a food source. Then they played orca calls from fish-eating orcas in California, and the sharks didn't react to the call. Finally, they played New Zealand's shark-eating orca calls. Great whites were familiar with the calls Bye, as they had day. heard them before, so they immediately fled. But out of nowhere, a big female great white showed up. This could be a sign that larger territorial sharks stand their ground and fight back to force orcas out of their territory. Oh, hell no. Even though orcas, with all their superiority, can hunt these sharks that fight back, oh. they are risk averse. They know a bite from an aggressive shark can cause significant harm. So it may be a possibility that these territorial sharks can deter orcas. Now the question is how serious this shark's aggressiveness can be. I searched the literature and found that there have been several documented instances of shark bite marks on orcas. These bite marks are usually found during necropsies of deceased orcas or on live orcas during health assessments and photographic documentation. Some of these bite marks can be from the scavenging behavior of sharks, trying to snatch a piece of dead or dying orcas. But for the bite marks on live orcas, sources say that these marks are from sharks trying to bite young or injured orcas. All these documented cases indicate that the bite marks are typically superficial and do not significantly impact the orca's health or survival. These bites are generally not fatal due to the orca's size, thick skin, and social behaviors, which often provide protection against such attacks. My search did not reveal any instances of a healthy orca, even juvenile ones, being killed by sharks. I searched a lot and checked all the resources available to see if sharks can fight back and the only evidence is the superficial bite marks, the two sharks that survived an orca attack, and the large female shark that approached when she heard the call of shark-eating orcas. So I must say that great white sharks, even if they fight back, stand minimal chance to defend themselves or hurt orcas. This may disappoint some shark lovers, but I think the best chance that sharks have is to dive deep and flee from orcas. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about orcas, Watch this video that shows how talented orcas are and how they use different hunting strategies to hunt literally anything they like. Before concluding the video, here is a disclaimer. 
I just tried to answer the question based on available anecdotal evidence. Of course, we don't have the answers to all the questions. Also, I am not a marine biologist. I am just a big fan of killer whales. So give more weight to the entertaining side of this video and remain skeptical about the answer to the question of whether sharks can fight back.